Hello there, everybody. Well, you know, I just finished a uh, video talking about this idea of a post-truth era or not believing in any experts and the idea that we have lost touch with uh, trust in one another. And then I reached into a large tub I have full of my writings over the past 20 years, and I grabbed a few pieces of paper, and I was going through them, and the very first one I grabbed was called The Truth That Never Was. And I wrote this, uh, well, about a year, year and a half ago, and I decided I would read it now, so <laughs> I can uh, put it onto a video, because sometimes I'll write a paper and have some ideas in my head. And when I go back to read it years later, I'm just like, wow, I wrote that? That's strange. I don't remember it. But uh, a majority of my writings will get lost to time, so I thought I would get a few out there in the world. So I'm going to read it. I believe we've evolved in order to recognize the beauty of the universe and manipulate free will through consciousness in order to become creators ourselves. The nature of existence lends no hint to the fundamental construct which underlies every plank length of existence. We can only speculate on what strings or levers may lie below the machinery of what we call reality. Glimpses may be had of those depths, however fleeting, but this is not for us to comprehend. Even our shared reality is merely sensory and varies by each person's interpretation of the world. Each a different angle, every fear, every hope, every desire, affecting how we perceive even the simplest of things. There is no consensus reality, and never was. We find strings and patterns which we agree on, and coalesce into factions and countries in order to uphold those patterns. Every creation eventually meets its demise, and human constructs are not excluded from that fate. This means one should not mourn the passing of truth as an objective term, nor the death of our faux culture. We need not fear that our economies are failing, that our people are divided, that there's war and pestilence and hatred and anger and frustration. For those are all reflections of the angst the universe periodically suffers. Each of our own sufferings, a mere image of planetary demise, shared chaos, and from chaos emerges order. It is the only way it can be. Out of the ashes rises the phoenix. A rebirth always follows the death of a culture. In our case, the crumbling football stadiums will be no different from the gladiator halls of the past. And surely, our descendants will see them as equally absurd. I can hear it now. What do you mean, father? Our ancestors gave themselves brain damage for entertainment? Why? I do not know, son. I do not know. We've come a long way, haven't we? Perhaps in time, when the smoke has cleared and the damage assessed, we will find the half-life of uranium was not so bad after all. Maybe. We could find ways to remedy our past errors, using mycelium and fungus to clean up oil spills and maybe even nuclear waste. We might find a way to dispose of the need for harmful fertilizers and pesticides. We might even decide that eating meat, however delicious and nutritious it may be, or may not be, the argument of nutrition pales in comparison to the toll on our environment, and upon closer inspection of these miles of hog slop and manure holding ponds, the sludge from mining and extraction, and even the nuclear waste ponds left over from rare earth mining for the very magnets we used to make our wind farms from, we may decide that it was just better to start over. We had so many options. So much for green energy. But hey, at least we tried. Or did we? There's nothing depressing about a tree consuming the decaying corpse of a million fallen cicadas. So brief were their lives, just long enough to add some spice to the soil and feed the local birds and lizards. But the tree, it sits silently, fungus assisting in careful dismantling of the innards and antenna of the rotting cicadas until every molecule dispersed through the underlying network of filaments and roots. Purpose served, the cycle starts over again. As in the Roman Empire, a hundred others have fallen, some larger than others. We've reached a capacity beyond the resources which we currently possess. 
Farmland becomes wasteland. Desertification takes hold of our once fertile valleys and grasslands as we make way for more and more progress to ensure that we have enough subdivisions to hold the workers for the factories that would collapse in a matter of decades. Yeah, we really fucked up. But what of it? What would we expect instead? We were primitive creatures just yesterday on the evolutionary tree. We have to remember how much we are influenced by our primal brains, working to better ourselves, while a noble gesture cannot change the society as a whole unless others are willing to participate. We only deserve better when we can agree on an outcome, and when a majority of us are still influenced by invisible forces and evil, scary demons, that is when we will continue to pursue. Legislation will be passed affecting millions of individual people based on hearsay, religion, philosophy. Nobody is ever happy with all the outcomes of a society. Part of what it means to live in a so-called democracy means we will not always agree on policy. That is how it should be. But when outside forces and lobbying interferes with rational discourse and decision-making, entire societies crumble under the weight of their own fat greed and ignorance. The people become the slaves, and the masters become rich. We have been there for a long time. The hammer has been held by a few people in powerful positions for some time now. When we meet the demise of our friends in Rome, however, it is not likely that any superpower will arise from the ashes. It will be people. This is because when the shit has hit the fan this time, it might take a while to recover. Our society hangs by a thread, and the only thing keeping the world economies afloat is nothing has happened yet to shake us into the realization that we are completely going down the wrong path, and nobody is steering the ship. My belief, however absurd, is that everything has a purpose. In the case of consciousness, maybe nature wanted mankind to create something magnificent, something that would require a high degree of technology to achieve, such as sending our bacterial brethren out into the depths of space to colonize other galaxies. Perhaps. With our current technological base, we can do a lot of great things for ourselves. But what we can, can we do for the universe? The idea seems so ridiculous on one hand, but replace the word universe with God, and everyone is suddenly on board. Can we not agree to disagree on how to define this force? Jesus H. Christ people, what is your problem with having to define the only one real God? Ahem. At any rate, we as creators must find our own path, and use caution not to fall into the trap of idolizing others. That is balanced with the need to avoid becoming an egotistical mess and needing constant approval ourselves to keep going. One must be strong and wise and healthy and intelligent, and all of this in an environment where we are nurtured and feel safe and able to speak freely. How often do these conditions come together for the average person today? Not often enough. It's a cruel reality that many live in conditions far too disgusting to find the time to worry about setting up any paths for themselves, except maybe to the water pump, where they pay for a gallon of fresh water from their own well, which is locked at night by a foreign company who bought the well and sells the water back to the people. Yes, it happens. And it is reality. We treat each other just like cattle. And this is always the sign of a failing machine. When all the parts are not given equal attention, one loose bolt can collapse the cart. We destroy our own system. That is just a fact. External circumstances, however, are more likely a culprit for the demise of any Western way of life, and may come sooner than later. No matter what mess we can create for ourselves, Mother Nature can deliver more death than we could shake a stick at. Truth is, we've reached a time when even our own nuclear arsenal could wipe us out or at least most of the life on Earth, in a giant flash and a nuclear winter. But a virus, too small to see, could do the same in a very short time. We are living beyond our means and refusing to look at things rationally, but rather than preparing, we are screaming at one another. So goes life. You cannot prepare for a blind punch, only to be ready for anything. My hope is that, from these ashes, we can all be the phoenix.
Are you depressed now? Don't be. The vast field of possibilities we have in each of us allows for a change of heart at any time and a change of pace to suit ourselves. We really are creators of our own reality. For only our eyes see things the way that we do. Nobody really has a consensus reality except what we choose to pretend to understand in one another. Those patterns that we agree on, which create the divisions we decide to uphold as values. Those values differ as much as our faces do, though as non-material ideas they are harder to distinguish. I did not write this to show how we have failed, but to show why we will prevail. There was never such thing as a human spirit in the past, only human self-interest and survival in not dying. We created that term to describe the desire to move forward, to discover new things and share those discoveries with one another. That meaning, however, has become rather obscured. Somehow, along the way, we decided that ideas were personal property and people were items of commerce. We stopped sharing our discoveries for fear of losing the ego boost that went with being recognized. And we thought the only way to protect our empires was to pretend that slaves had inferior genetics and deserved their fate. That was bullshit, and we always knew it. We wanted more than we deserved, more than was naturally viable long term, and instead of using nature as a guide, we took luxury as a given right. Was it? <laughs> Who really benefits from the vast wealth which is accrued in the name of progress? We know where it goes, but forget that it is invisible. It has no substance. The trillions of dollars locked up in hyperspace will never be collected on, for the only thing they represent is commerce, and what could be obtained differs from that reality. A billion dollars will not buy a carpenter if there are none to be found. So the system relies on participation by each of us. It appears that people have discovered this and are refusing to play the game. This is a sure sign of collapse of an empire that has stood the test of time, the human empire. We've backed ourselves into a corner and the only way out seems to bring the house down. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself and maybe a few thousand nuclear missiles, or a virus, you know, that kind of stuff. Which brings us full circle back to the loss of truth as an objective term. Do not mourn that which you never lost, for you may have never had it in the first place. We never had it. Dusting off the cobwebs of our past and delving into the vast sum of knowledge we have accrued in the past few thousand years, those who choose to study civilization will see that history is presented as a merely a fantasy, a collection of anecdotes and stories left by the ancestors themselves. Just as overstated and biased as any modern blogger or author, any musician or artist who has an opinion and a theory, religion shows us this well. How a small idea can be magnified and expanded on for several hundred years and convince people who have no evidence whatsoever to believe as much except what we call faith from what others have told us. Faith indeed, for everything we are taught from the time we can talk is suspect, and the picture we've created of the world is far too subjective and personal to ever hope to study consciousness as an objective observer. What a joking of an idea. Oh, what a joke indeed. We're trapped by our own consciousness, yet freed from the constraints of clockwork by that very trap. Such a conundrum. The solution comes, eventually, to all who consider and seek it. The solution is to see there was never a problem, or always a problem, and the world will play out as it does. The only control we have at all is over how we choose to observe and what we choose to do. Most importantly, how we react to those things around us. The solution to the truth dilemma is to realize that people have been lying to you from the time you were born. Presidents and officials have lied about the State of the Union from the time that any country was founded. Protecting self-interest has been a cornerstone of politics at every time through history. The Founding Fathers of the United States were not all upstanding men with fantastic ideas and honest intentions. They were just much better at hiding the corruption 
in a time when the printing press was the best social media around. Information has always been controlled, and when you consider why, you can see there can be no other way. Nobody wants to be smeared. Nobody wants their darkest truths exposed or their failures displayed in the limelight. No politician wants their past inspected or every decision noted. But in the modern world, that's exactly how it is. Digital media has made it appear as that there is something new in the works. They call it lying. Oh goodness, what will we ever do? Sarcasm aside, those lies are easier to confront when the evidence can be presented, and our current world allows everybody to find whatever dirt they choose on whoever may have committed a heinous act or used public funds improperly. We can find criminals and use digital trails to catch all kinds of failures and values and expose them instantly for the entire world to see. This means, on one hand, we can help to expose the corruption, all of us, but on the other hand, it allows us to buy into the lies more easily and the new idea of fake news comes to be born. There's nothing new under the sun, and these behaviors are not exclusive to our generation or time. They are just more plentiful and easier to see. We have a literal window to the entire world. In many areas, more people have cell phones and the internet than indoor plumbing. We're truly living in strange times, and our fast-paced lives create a sense that everything is falling apart quickly and there's no way to stop it. It's not falling apart. Relax. It's just starting over. Reset, reboot, recharge. Of course, our descendants may or may not participate. I speak for my own perception, to be sure. I could be lying. You never know. Nothing I say should be considered fact. I know no facts, only ideas. I have no truths, only opinions. We can never perform the same experiment twice in the same way, as conditions and expectations are always changing, and the very observation affects the outcome of the experiment. We are ripples in a pond, moving outward, water slowly moving back to a calm state. We are soon far below resting on the bottom, with no trace left on the surface. Our societies are like anthills, working hard to build higher, higher, higher. But eventually, every one of them is abandoned and left to the elements. It is inevitable, as the existence of matter from a vacuum. It just has to be. I see our trivial efforts to understand the needs of the universe as humorous. The way we argue about idols and gods, or property and borders. It's akin to children fighting over an empty box. At the end, both walk away. Nobody ever had a point to begin with. Nobody wanted the box. It's just a temporary release of emotion and a hope to have something others do not. Nobody really wanted the box. It was just too good to pass up. It was never about the box. Somebody else had it, so we wanted it too. Simple, really. To see and understand the vastness of the universe, to the best ability of a human, all senses and emotions considered, and not believe the universe is conscious, well, that's something I cannot understand. The more we try and disprove a conscious universe, the more absurd the excuses become. On the flip side of that problem, the more we try to anthropomorphize God and put a face on that awareness, the more problems we run into when expressing ourselves to others. We may be fighting over something as trivial as a language barrier, which says a lot about our primal selves. Nobody really understands what we are here for what our deepest roots are, or what our destiny will be as a species on this planet. Plenty of people pretend to know, and for every false idol, there will be a thousand eagle, eager followers, so untrusting of their own minds merely because they have not let yearn, learned how to properly use them. They become trapped in a paradigm, indoctrinated in one way or another, and the groupthink is too strong to break free of. They become one of the millions of walking dead, zombies in their own minds, and trapped in the system of someone else's choosing. The cycle continues, and we end up with groups within groups within groups, just as it would be otherwise. It is, in a way, inevitable in a diverse world. It became about winning, 
It became about who can achieve the biggest, the best, and the finest. We tried on many different clothes to suit us as a people, and none of them could cover up our birthday suit to our satisfaction. We tried to tell God what to do. We tried to allow God to tell us what to do. We left God for another God and another, and each generation found a new belief to suit what he thought to be a reality, to explain the vast complexity of existence in a way that everyone could understand. It never worked. We used archetypes and allegories, and the wise and educated of past generations encoded their di discoveries into texts they hope would survive. They discovered hidden languages in nature, ones we call geometry and mathematics. We used those tools, and those predictions and equations allowed us to create amazing works of art. We could see results. They knew to preserve those truths, which can be known, no matter how we differ on our perceptions. Mathematics resides outside our senses, outside our language. Using geometry, we can understand the space we inhabit, however only slightly more than without it. No amount of research, no amount of scientific study, and no math equations can explain how detailed and long and explain the beauty of a sunset with the person you love, that last sliver of light, just as it passes beyond the horizon like a glimmer of hope passing not away, but settling in for a brief interlude, soon to rise again.